Hi, this is Brother Richard, <coughs> and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototypus Mystery, and this will be part 328 in our series. We are <coughs> continuing with the title, Life Under the Gods, as it was in ancient Israel, a public. We've been talking about the coming change in existence, in reality, in the domain in which the human race will find itself. We've said that the human race is going to forfeit its position as custodian over the surface world. It's going to be replaced by superior intelligences who will bring radical changes in the state of existence as man has understood existence he's going to enter into a stage in which he is totally unprepared and those that are being given custodianship over the earth are going to <clears throat> enter into a reality in which they operate which is a superior reality to that which man was created to exist in having said that <clears throat> scripture indicates at the judgment which the Lord will pronounce against the human race the former regions of the heavens the neither regions of the earth and the water regions under the earth will be opened. As they are opened, they are going to release again the fallen intelligences which inhabit them to influence the human race. Turn to Exodus, the 20th chapter, verse 4. <clears throat> Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of any that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. So these regions have been sealed at the time of the conclusion of the Lord's ministry so that they cannot interfere with the Father's plan as it pertains to the development of the Prototokos. We are coming to the end of this state in which now the totality of the divisions that hitherto have existed are going to be eliminated. And you're again going to have connection made between the heavens, <clears throat> the surface world, the subterranean, and the events and the beings that inhabit these regions, all of which are superior to the human race. Which brings us to our next principle. Scripture teaches the gods will demand that the humans under the dominion serve them as they did anciently. In other words, when these beings are allowed to come back again, they're just going to continue the activities that they were engaged in at the time in which they were shut down. At this time, mm -hmm. should we understand that child sacrifice increases significantly? Across the board. But significantly. Across the because board. it's still going on today right now. That's nothing. Right, in comparison nothing, to today. Nothing, okay. nothing, nothing. Then there's no comparison. 
Turn to Joshua 24, verse 2. What Israel dealt with, as you read consistently in the entirety of the Old Testament, the whole human race is going to be dealing with at the commencing of the beginning of sorrows, period. Joshua 24, actually we'll start verses 1 to 2. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel in Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for the heads and for the judges <coughs> and for the officers and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time. Even Terah, the father of Abraham, <coughs> and the father of Nahor, and they served other gods. So what he's talking about here basically is a time in which after the flood you read Genesis from about verse from about verse, chapter 11 on down is that after the flood immediately after the flood the gods came back and reestablished themselves in the surface world and they began to influence the human race unabated so the worship of God spread throughout the human race. This is what Joshua was alluding to. <clears throat> the only time it was interrupted was at the time of which the, when Elohim and the person of the Lord Jesus Christ shut it down after he uh, ascended, <clears throat> uh, after he resurrected, so that God's plan for the establishment of the prototokas could commence. That's why we have the grace period. And Joshua is presenting this to them in a format in which they can comprehend and make a decision. Turn to Deuteronomy, eighth chapter, verse 19. Um, sorry, mm -hmm. Elohim shuts down um, the false idol idolatry um, after the resurrection of Jesus? He shut down the ability of the Luciferians to interfere directly with the human race okay. after his resurrection. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 8, 19. Okay. And it shall be, if thou do all at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish. So, warning after warning was given to the nation of Israel, trying to get them to understand the danger of the Luciferian influence which they could come in direct contact with <clears throat> but you know fell on deaf ears now I'm going to give you a, an example turn to the book of Colossians bear with me a moment Colossians the second chapter
This talks about the work of the Lord at the time of his uh, crucifixion, what he accomplished. Verse 14 and 15. Fourteen and fifteen. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. He's talking about the law of sin and death, of course, which <clears throat> basically kept the uh, the human race in bondage, kept the prototokos from being able to qualify for the position that the Father had waiting for them. The Lord eliminated all that and enabled them to begin to proceed after his completion. Now, verse 15, in having spoiled, the word spoil there means to divest, take away, uh, take out of the hands of principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it what he's talking about is he confronted the gods in all the areas where they were operating and shut them down so they couldn't directly influence the human race after that they can indirectly influence the human race and they continue to do so but not directly. You don't have a point in which you run into somebody and you suddenly get overwhelmed at their presence. It's coming back, but it is not. It not has has not happened on an overall scale. So, at what point does this happen? <clears throat> After his resurrection. Okay. So, Mr. Jones. Yes. By what means, demons? When you say by what means. It's not directly influenced. So how is he influenced indirectly? Through the medium of the spirit world. They can reach out. Are demons spiritual? Oh. Yeah, but we're not talking about demons. Demons are in the sense of being <coughs> confined. We're talking about the principalities. I know you're using the term demon in the sense of demonian, superior intelligence. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> in that sense, they're not av available to do that yet. They're still in prison. The guys that are doing it are the second stringers in the heavens. Psalms 82. Yes. Oh. Um. So so we're really describing the minimizing, not the complete winding up, the minimizing of the influence of dynamics that these are able to exceed upon the service. Well, no, you're talking about the shutting down totally of the individuals who, even though they were imprisoned in the subterranean, the Luciferians, they could still influence humans on Earth. They're still doing that today. No, they're not. Not in the slightest. No. So uh, the only you've got to be released to do that. Hang on a second. So the only influence is from second the second trainers. Trainers. Yes. We don't, so then how is Satan able to do the same thing? He's not second. We're talking about his organization. And even he's limited. Oh, yes, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I understood you to me that the shutdown was total and complete. <clears throat> it is. Directly. You see Satan walking around anywhere? I'm talking about indirectly. You're talking about directly. No. Yes. I was talking about indirectly. No. My contention was there is no direct right. influence. Agreed. As we read in Exodus, the 20th chapter. Because if it were, you'd still have that problem with people making images and sure. doing all this sure. other stuff. My, my point was, to what degree is the indirect influence mitigated? 
to the degree that the principalities, the thrones, the dominions have no ability whatsoever. That's the fourth empire. Directly is what we're saying. Directly. I'm talking about indirectly. Indirectly, only Satan and the principalities wow. in the heavens have a limited ability to do the very minuscule. Remember what Paul says, 2 Thessalonians, the mystery of iniquity does now operate. <clears throat> it's allowing, being allowed to intensify only recently. Sure. So we're on the same page now. Yeah. Okay. Well, hang on a second. Let me, let me okay. start my questioning okay. over okay. again now, Mr. Jones. Yes. They are not directly influencing, they are indirectly influencing by what means? They that are indirectly influencing are the principalities in the heavens. Well, but Satan. What are they doing? Are they influencing? In the spiritual realm, they influence man's spirit, man's inner being. So their the, the dynamics is, is expressed into, yes. together with the veil and so on and so forth. Yes. Okay. It doesn't operate physically, it operates spiritually. Man so, can't so, so. detect. That's why I'm, I'm emphasizing the indirect right. limitation, right. limitation. What you're looking at here is going to be allowed to be direct, which will put in the shade anything that's happened right. on the face of the earth. Right. So when the Lord allows us to understand that thoughts which come into our mind are usually not our own, right? He's teaching us. Hang on a second. Take a look at what you know, exactly. just been said. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I was literally going to say. It's like mind control. Yes. And what you're seeing is the incremental lessening of the restrictions yes. Yes. about that. Yes. And that isn't even the fourth empire. The fourth empire has to be released. Sure. That's the guys in the heavens and Satan. And you get this crazy, uh, distorted um, view from the human mind of life. It's a total distortion. A person they can be influenced out of believing who he is and accept something which is alien to him. Oh, I'm no longer a man, I'm a woman. I'm no longer a woman, I'm a dog. That is attributed to the indirect influence of the second stringers. The nation of uh, Peru last week signed a bill, or the Prime Minister did, that anything to do with transgender, gay, like this, that, the other. It's a mental disorder. It was Crazy a mental disorder Lord. in the 50s. It's a mental disorder <laughs> in the 50s. It hasn't changed. She, bless her name, has the strength to come out and, and do that. And I, I, I trust that more and more nations in South America will recognize Hopefully. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. You can't get away with that nonsense in Africa. They don't put up with Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, not to me. Well, <laughs> You're right, not today. <laughs> yes. One day at a time, brother. One day yes. at a time. Yes. But we can see uh, a big example of that is just get in your car. And you can see the aberrant <laughs> behavior of people. <clears throat> but let's go on. <clears throat> so we see the Lord shut it down so that the Father's plan could progress. Amen. Now, <clears throat> When they make their appearance, what we will find, scripture teaches, they will <clears throat> demand that the human race uh, do service to them. What does this service pertain to? Scripture teaches service to the gods will include giving of provisions in turn for protection. Deuteronomy 32, verses 37 to 38.
And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drink the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. So when these intelligences make their appearance, Daniel, second chapter, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. They're going to come. <clears throat> man is, like we said before, we can't emphasize and stress it enough. The human race will be in a state of terror. Absolute horror. Why? Because it's going to be in an environment, a reality in which it can't deal, it can't understand, it can't function. And so it's going to go to the only source in which they can find stability and put their trust in. They've rejected God. So the, the, it'll be a wide open uh, opportunity for the return of the gods to set up shop again as they once did in ancient Israel. <clears throat> Scripture indicates some will enter into a covenant relationship with the gods. Exodus 23, verse 32 to 33. Exodus 23, what? 32 to 33. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto thee. So what will happen, organized religion, Christian religion, is going to apostasy. What does that mean? It's going to, to go away from the truth of God, God's word. Well, the pronouncement here is if you forget God, you're going to wind up serving the gods. They are going to ultimately go into idol worship, pagan <clears throat> connections, making covenant relations with the Luciferian gods. And this relationship will continue. Once you establish a relationship with these beings, that's it. That's, that's an eternal connection. When you die, you're still connected to that being. And why is it they connect, make these connections? Because of the power that they demonstrate? Uh, the power that they demonstrate and the fear of the individual. Again, they, they, they are looking for stability. Their world has collapsed. They have no way of uh, directing, understanding what's taking place. And there is no power in the Christian church. All right, long ago. Talking about the Christian church. Mm. The Christian church is apostatized. Mm. And if they apostatize, we just read it. You forget God, you're going to go and serve other gods. Same thing is true with Christians. Only it's going to be wholesale at this time. So, okay. I was going to ask you, so you said that the eternal connection is made when um, they are serving the other gods. So do we have that same eternal connection um, with God if we choose? Like, if sure. we serve Him, then it, like, no matter what we do, nothing can separate us from Him. As long as you eternal. remain committed to Him. Okay. It's an eternal commitment. Like how, okay, exactly. So, like, the same thing with the people who enter agreements with the false gods. Like, even, like, today, like... Like, I know this is, like, probably the, this is forever, but what I'm saying is, like, um, like today, if somebody were to be uh, working for Satan, that's forever. They're working for him forever. Yep. Yeah. That's it. So, those people who believe 
that they are in other religions, that's what they call it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you're either in Christ or you're not, this is real simple. That's it. Those who are not in Christ, to what degree will they recognize a new way of life and a new religion? Because they're already serving these gods, just that these gods aren't physically here, standing right next to them. Well, it'll be different. They're not serving those gods now. The gods that they're serving are going to be cut off when the Fourth Empire rises. And everybody is going to experience the change. So, the god that the Buddhist is serving, just for example, who is obviously a fallen angelic being of, of some level, mm. right? Same as yeah. In fact, you, you would say that it's a principality in the, in the heavens. I look at it basically as a pseudo. Buddha was a human being. And these people are following the teachings of a human being. Right. Um, it doesn't have to be Buddha, it could be any, anybody. Yeah, but I'm saying, all the religions are established by men. Okay. When this thing hits, their belief system in that religion is going to be shattered. Mm. Because they're going to be dealing with a reality that their former religion cannot compete with. Bring in then the point of the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. We know who they serve. Yeah. We know this is true because the Pope has told them to pray to Lucifer. Yeah. At the point Ooh. of the beginning of Sorrows mm -hmm. and the appearance of the Fourth Empire, uh -huh. they will suddenly realize, hang on a second, we thought we were praying to, to Jesus Christ and evidently we're not. Mm -hmm. At that point, do they comprehend anything? No. They just carry on doing what they've been doing. They are going to come under another influence. Number one, the Catholic Church has a framework, a foundation on a pseudo-Christianity. The Pope is supposed to be the stand in for Christ. They cannot enter into the reality that's coming with that demeanor. That lie is going to run up against a solid wall and fall to the ground. So then they're, they're no different from someone who calls himself yeah. an atheist. Yeah, that, that, that religion is going to shatter just like Buddhism, Confucianism, Shintoism, everything that's currently in vogue is going to go out the window. Do they, do they experience anything worse because they've been what some people might call super pretenders? Yeah. The leadership is going to be uh, Jeremiah 25, 33. Well, I meant the, the congregation. The congregation is going to come under the Fourth Empire guides. Uh, did you have a, a question? Um, yes, I was going to ask about. Um, sorry, I may I may have forgotten. It's okay if it comes back. Yeah, all that you have now, everything is going to whether it's whatever is established, it's going to fall. Oh yes, you answered it without even knowing. I was going to yeah. ask you, does Christianity fall too? Yeah. <laughs> Literally, that's so crazy. Everything. It's so not it's true not Christianity. He means organized religion. No, organized but like, even, so even like the, the God's church falls. Yeah. So that, because we're organized. Wait, 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 wait. He's talking about organized religion. But not, uh, not the... Those not, who, are, who are following the, these truths. They don't as, as fall. Of course not, because we're in... How in could? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, as so, long as you're... But the, the, the religions, like the mega churches yes. and stuff like that. Okay. Yes, you see the difference between what they're teaching and what you're learning here. Yes, yes. What you're learning is coming directly from the scripture. What they're teaching is the teachings of men who interpret something uh, which is not scriptural to begin with. Or is somebody trying to entertain you based on one scripture? They take one scripture and they say, how can I entertain somebody with this? Yeah, that's, that's why it's going to fall. Because it's not based it's not on... It's not entertainment. This uh -huh. is real. No. Yeah, it's not based on the biblical scripture. Uh, case in point, what is taught is that uh, gods don't exist. What exists are idols that men have made and worshipped on their own. If they taught what we're learning here tonight, their attitude would be totally different. They'd be prepared for when this thing goes down, but they're taught just the opposite. Oh, it's a fiction. It doesn't exist. It's just somebody somebody conjured up this thing that they're going to sit there and worship. And that opens the door wide for Luciferian deception 
in uh, ultimate dominion over the individual. Because uh, if you if you don't have the truth, you can't combat what's being given to you. You got nothing to compare it to. I shake my head, but I know if it wasn't for this group, I would also be like them too. So we can't blame them, you know. The father just have to be grateful that God allowed me to see. He chose you to be here with us. Right. And I pray that you hang in there with us. No, yeah. I realized after the first visit that this is not a church sermon. Because a church sermon, like, even you don't have to take notes, you know what's being said. Here you really have to take notes because this is, like, university. This is it's beyond for that, your yeah. life, though. Like, <laughs> like you said, it's beyond that because, see, we are yeah. being prepared to teach others deeper. that are blind. Gradually. So we are, God has chosen us from eternity to be prepared to feed his sheep. Amen. Remember, when this goes crazy. Rapture. No, the beginning of sorrows. Beginning of sorrows. That's when what we're doing, we gradually to go and teach other people. Right now we're learning. We, we have that to stay in, in the word. Go to stay in the word. Yay, praise God. Okay, thank you. Now, scripture indicates the gods will agree to prosper them in return for their sacrifices. The whole aspect of this uh, situation with the gods hinges on one thing, sacrifice. Starts with minimum sacrifices, provisions being offered, then the demand increases, increases, increases until you gotta sacrifice something that's more valuable to you. The first one. And ultimately, what happened in Israel, they had a religion called, uh, they called it passing through to Moloch. Yes. <clears throat> and Moloch was a figure of a bird that had a, a chair, it was a, a chair, metallic chair in the the center of this chair was a hole that was honed out. And inside the hole, they had um, a fire. And the chair basically had two arms. And what the Israelites would do, they would take their babies and they would place the baby on the arms of the chair. The Moloch's hands was outstretched like that. And they'd lay the baby on the hands of Moloch and in the hole, they'd light the fire until this whole thing glowed and the baby burned up. And then when it burned up and it died, it dropped down into the hole, into the fire, and was totally consumed. It was called passing through to Moloch. And it reached the point where the whole nation was sacrificing to Moloch, their children. Hillsong, I think I have told you this, Hillsong, early last year, put on some kind of stage production which had the Moloch, hmm. uh, just um, unbelievable, it's the Chinese theater in Hollywood, it had the Moloch uh, statue, if you wish, the hands. Who, the who was doing this? Hillsong, your yeah. good friends, what's his name? <laughs> oh, yeah. Crouch. Brian, uh, no, that was... Um, you say your good friends. Uh, it was always his friend. Yeah, right, your good buddy. The whole family. But the point is, is that in their minds, they were trying to recreate Israel. That's what they came up with. <laughs> So you can see who's running that show. They said that Hillsong, uh, Bethel, totally occultic. Oh, right. Yes, yes. Sorry. Bill Johnson is. That's uh, right. They do grave uh, soaking. Uh, uh, is um, um, Bethel. I don't want to even. Get they, into they have. They do grave soaking. Well, they have. They, they have classes in astral projection. You can take your child there, and they'll teach them how to. I have out of body experiences, occultism, the whole thing is. Um, they do grave soaking where they, they encourage you to go talk to your loved ones that are past, where you sit on their grave and you pray with them. That's so. How do you guys not understand what that is? You're praying to the dead. Because like, they're deceived. Well, Benny Hen was, was espousing that for a long time. Oh, yeah. yeah, he would say go to Ka Catherine Coleman's. Uh, to tomb there and he get inspiration. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the interview that popped out. Yeah, the whole thing is, well, anyway, yeah. Uh -huh. Anyway, turn to Jeremiah 44, 
We're going to read verses 15 to 19. Excuse me, you said passing through homelick is baby sacrifices. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Now what had happened was <clears throat> the nation was worshiping the gods. They departed from uh, acknowledging YHVH and things weren't going too good so the women, the wives got together on their own and picked out this female goddess to worship. And Jeremiah confronts them about this. So you pick it up starting in verse 15 to 19. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, and Pathros answered Jeremiah saying, so Jeremiah goes down there and he confronts them with this, saying, as for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goes forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings, and our princes in the cities of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem, but then had we plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have want. We have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? In other words, we did it behind our husband's back. So Jeremiah goes on to tell them, you're going to get the wrath of God because of what you've done. And they said, we're not concerned about that because the Queen of Heaven is blessing us. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah said, the sword's going to come down on you. You're not going to go, be, go back to Jerusalem. You're not going to see Judah anymore. You're going to die here because of what you did. They didn't believe him. But the, the mentality here is they put their faith in other gods and they believed that these gods would bless them in times of adversity, whereas the God that they were supposed to worship wouldn't. Now, scripture indicates the gods will demand greater and greater sacrifices for their favor. Second Kings 17, verses 16 to 17, we'll close with this. 2 Kings 17, verses 16 to And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worshiped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. Notice the two words, worship and serve. Baal is another name for Satan. Mm. In Jeremiah the 50, 51st chapter, it's called Bel, B-E-L. 
And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire. This is to pass through the fire to Moloch. So everybody was doing it. And used divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. This is exactly what's going to happen here. At the begin at, after the begin the beginning of sorrows takes hold. Turn to uh, Revelation, ninth chapter again. You can see it all laid out. Revelation 9th chapter 20 to 21. <clears throat> and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver, which represent the devils, and brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. The whole human race is going to be a criminal society, because that's what satanic society is. It's a criminal, deviant detestation in the sight of God and this is where the human race is heading anybody that stays on this train it's not going to end well with